We're given a function that involves a trig function over an interval 0 to 24. We're going to be working with that. I've also drawn in a grid that's going to be used in part A. And the only real uh, information that I think we'll find useful is to remember the average value for a function over an interval is given here. So let's go ahead with part A. And here we just have to sketch the graph. Well, obviously, we could uh, just plug in points on our calculator and sketch it. But let's just think a little bit about it, um, see if we can learn something. 80 is what uh, we would call the sinusoidal axis. That's going to be the center of the graph. The amplitude will be 10. And this is an upside down cosine function. So it'll start out at 70, 80 minus 10, and then it'll reach as high as 90. Now let's focus in on the period, which is typically the thing that is most troubling for students. When the input to cosine is 0, then cosine has its full height. So we know that when t is 0, the input is 0, and so cosine will be 80 minus 10 times 1. When the input is at 2 pi, we will return to that position and complete a cycle. And we can see that when t is 24, this input will be 2 pi. Uh, just one more point and then it should be clear what this function looks like. And that is when this input is pi, cosine is at its minimum value. And since we've got an upside down cosine, that'll be up at 90. And when t is 12, the input is pi. So we can pretty much see that our sketch is going to look something like this. Comes up here, goes there here, and then back down. That's not a perfect sketch, but it gives us the right idea. Okay, let's go on to part B. This is a request for the average temperature. <clears throat> and so we're going to use the average value over an interval. Okay, we're going to say that the average temperature is going to equal the integral of 1 over the distance of the interval, 14 minus 6, and then we're going to integrate from 6 to 14 the temperature. This, of course, we're going to have to handle numerically, approximate numerically. So I've already gone ahead and put that formula in, 80 minus 10 cos, okay, as y, 1, Let's come out of there and we just need to do the indefinite integral. Check to make sure that you're in the right mode, namely radians, for your angular measure. But what we want is the FNINT function. I know some of you find this up in math, but I actually prefer to take it out of the catalog. And our interval is 6 to 14. And notice that we've already put the function in, so we're just going to call that back up. It's y1. Again, it makes sense to put the function in y1 because it's typical in these problems that we'll need to use that formula, that function, more than once. And if we have to refer to something more than once, you only want to put it in once. Okay, here's our integral, and then we're going to divide by the interval. So now we're going to divide this by 14 minus 6, which is 8. And that gives us our approximation, 87.1619. So they asked for it to the nearest degree. We're going to just say approximating... Approximating numerically, eighty-seven 
87 degrees Fahrenheit. It just said to the nearest degree, so that's where we're going to stop. Let's look at C now. Okay, C is a little bit more interesting in my estimation because we have to find when the air conditioner kicks in and that's whenever the temperature exceeds 78 degrees or reaches 78 and so we're going to handle this numerically um, we're just going to say evaluating numerically okay uh, let's just take a look at this graph. So if you noticed, I had already put in 78. So we're really just trying to find when the 78 degree line crosses the F of T line. I set our window to uh, 0 to 24 and our height from 60 to 100 for the window just because that's the grid that they gave us. So now we just have to find the intersection of these two lines. Intersection. It's going to first graph that. This takes a little longer than it probably does on your calculator just because the uh, little bit of background information, the screen capture program that I use uh, because it's running simultaneously, it slows down the calculator itself. So, if I knew any good jokes right now, I'd tell them. At any rate, we can see a couple of intersection points, and that's what we need to home in on. So that'll be our first curve. That'll be our second curve. Our guess for an intersection point, I'm just going to say 6. And that turns out to be not too far off. 5.2309. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to store that just in case we need that value. So you can store x by saying x store and we'll put it in um, a. 5.2309 um, I'm going to say that T1 equals 5.2309. Let's find that other point, T2. We're going to again have to go back to that intersection. And so we go back there. Let's find the intersection. At least we've got our graph still. Our first and second curves are the only curves available, but our guess, we're going to put in 18 this time over in this area right here. And we get an answer of 18.7691. Again, I'm going to store that by quitting the graph and then choosing X, which has the intersection point. Store it in, let's put it in B. So now I have those two points in case I need those later. Team point seven six nine. What was that last digit? Eighteen point seven six nine one. I like working with four digits. I may have mentioned this other situations because since we're going to perform internal calculations that we want to be accurate to three digits for the results we want our internal work to be accurate to four digits. And so we can finally um, evaluate um, C. I've written those numbers down. I really should have written them here. T1 equals 5.2309. T2 equals 18.7691. And now what I want to say, um, temperature is at or above 78 
78 degrees Fahrenheit when uh, T is between T1 and T2. Whether we use less than or equal to or just less than is really immaterial because these are just approximations. Okay, now we come to D. We have to calculate the total cost of something. So obviously we're integrating and we're integrating with respect to time from T1 to T2. Already we can see that it was useful to save those two values. But the question is what goes here? We have to imagine the cost accumulating. So we have to break that cost up into small parts. For every degree above 78 degrees, it's a nickel for every hour. So what we're going to do is we're going to say f of t minus 78. That function measures degrees over 78. And then we have to multiply that by 0 0.05. I guess I'll just write times 0.05. That's the function that we have to calculate because these, this, the so-called integrand, is what gradually accumulates in giving us our total price. So let's go back to the calculator. And we need to do another FNINT calculation. So let's bring that up from the catalog. Okay, now we can use that T1 and T2, which you remember we stored as A and B. So, this is, we're going to recall A. Our next point is to recall B. Again, there's nothing wrong with just writing the numbers down and entering them in again, but every opportunity we can take advantage of to not have to rewrite a number is a chance to not write the number wrong. Okay, so now what goes in here, it's 0 0.05 times our function. Again, I don't have to rewrite the function because I know where I stored it. y1 uh, minus 78 degrees. I suppose I could do minus y2, but that seems just a little too cute. So I will restrain myself. And dx. And we get $5.10. They sit around to the nearest t uh, penny. So... We're going to say is approximately equal to $5.10. That's it.